our Nathan and Lewis is not here with us this week, so it's just me. Uh, we're going to be talking about project management, how to fulfill services, and outsourcing. So, uh, you know, this is this is an extremely important uh, part of business. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're just doing web design or SEO or internet marketing or um, whether you have uh, air conditioning service or carpet cleaning service. It doesn't matter. Everybody has to utilize some sort of project management. They have to fulfill these services. Um, some of them even outsource to subcontractors or, you know, a lot of web designers will um, go to different freelance sites to find, uh, you know, find people to help with the work. So this is, this is something that's common in every single industry. Uh, it doesn't matter what industry it is. It, it's just common. It happens. You, you have to do this. And if you don't, um, a lot of things are going to go wrong. So uh, what you're going to learn tonight is why this is vital to your business. Um, you're going to learn outsourcing, uh, the different ways you could outsource, and uh, what I think is the right way, um, where you go to hire outsourcers, um, making sure your project will succeed before it even starts, and how to effectively manage your projects. And also, uh, the project management tool that I recommend, that I use uh, in my business every single day. So uh, there, there's a lot of information in here, and I think that you guys will benefit from it a lot. Um, and like I said, as we as we move on with this and, and uh, go throughout this webinar, uh, you guys can ask questions. Uh, anything that you want to know, uh, we could we could uh, answer those questions. So um, let's get moving. So why is this vital? Why is this so important uh, for your business? Uh, well, well, the main reason is if you don't have a proper system or you know processes to handle uh, the workload um, you end up with a lot of problems uh, stress and, and I know a lot of people could say okay well stress yeah I'm always stressed out that's not a big deal well when you have a lot of projects going on and it seems like everything's a mess you know that's that's a different level of stress you end up with so much stress that you can't even sleep you have nightmares about clients calling and wondering why something isn't done then they want refunds and all this stuff so you know it, it's it's pretty serious you know stress is something that could really affect you it could affect your sales your reputation everything so um you know if you don't have those proper systems and processes you're going to have a ton of stress uh you also have projects and tasks that slip through the cracks and this is something that happens to me even with you know a really good system uh, even with a, a perfect plan in place i still have certain tasks and certain projects that um kind of slip through the cracks say uh, i don't know i guess i i think that you know everything's good with it and i overlook a couple things it, it just happens um and it's going to happen even more often when you don't have a proper system or process in place. Um, and it's also going to end up with, you're going to end up with unhappy customers. You know, when, when a client doesn't get their website um, by, you know, whatever due date that you gave them, you know, they're going to be pretty pissed off. You're going to have complaints. You're going to have a loss of revenue, loss in revenue. So, uh, you know, it, this is why it's so important. It doesn't matter what kind of service you offer what you do uh, in your profession, what industry you're in, it doesn't matter. You still need a way to manage your projects, manage your work, um, and, and make sure that you have a system and process in place to handle everything. So it, it's pretty necessary. Now, uh, how many of you guys out there already have, you know, some sort of system in place to complete the work? Give me a two. And if you don't have one, uh, give me a four. Gotcha. So a lot of you guys don't even don't have anything going. So um, now, have you noticed that it's easy to lose track of tasks, lose track of you know what you're supposed to do? So you're kind of just sitting there. You know you have a lot of work to do, but you know you don't know the first step. What do I do? What's the most important thing that I do? You know what do I prioritize? You know that that's what happens. Those are the thoughts that you have when you don't have a system in place and. Um, you don't have a, a clear focus 
on what you need to do with your projects. And and trust me, like I, I know sales is the most important thing um, because if you don't have sales, you don't have any projects to fulfill. You don't have, you know, the lifeline or the blood of your business. So uh, I, I know sales is important and a lot of people want to focus on sales, but, um, you know, you when you focus on sales and you have a, a ton of projects, then you kind of get lost. You, you just get lost and you're, you know that you're, you have a lot of stuff to do, but you don't know what to do, what to do first, what to do second. So you're just kind of sitting there wondering, you know, uh, okay, I, I know I need to do this. I knew I need to do that. What do I do first? And then you get so stressed out that you don't even get anything done. You're just sitting there thinking about everything that you need to do. So, uh, you know, this is, this is why it's so important. Um, having a project management plan for fulfillment, it, it truly does allow you to create a sustainable and repeatable process um, for your business. It brings you an income stream for your business. Uh, it, it allows you to survive and not just survive, but prosper and scale. Um, you know, a lot of people will ask me, well, what's it take to get to you know thirty thousand dollars a month selling websites or selling SEO or reputation management, this and that? But uh, the truth is, you know, even if they were able to sell that much, they couldn't fulfill it. Um, a lot of people struggle just to just to fulfill maybe two or three or four projects a month. Oh, imagine thirty projects a month. Imagine fifty projects a month. So. Um, this is why it's important. You got to have it in place. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the, the next slide here. Um, outsourcing. You know, outsourcing is a, a beautiful thing, but uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. You know, the biggest myth uh, on the internet when it comes to marketing, whether it comes to running your own business, um, it's about outsourcing, like you could outsource 100% of your business. That is the biggest myth. Now, uh, give me a five if you guys have uh, been to some of the forums out there and, and see people talking about outsourcing their entire business. You know, give me a five if you've seen that. Right, right. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's why a lot of people want to get into this because, uh, well, why wouldn't they? You think that, well, all you have to do is get a couple clients, a couple customers, you make a few sales here and there, and uh, you don't have to do any work. You just uh, find some Filipino or something for a dollar an hour and uh, your life is set. You don't have to do anything. You know, that's the impression that they, they give you. That's the, the mindset a lot of people have, and they give up because, you know, when, when they finally do make some sales, they realize, well, there's a lot more to it than just finding somebody on Odesk or Guru or Elance and paying them a couple dollars an hour to do the work. You know, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to uh, running a business than just – finding some cheap labor and, uh, you know, just having them do all the work for you. It doesn't work like that. So, you know, in, in order to successfully outsource repeatedly, you got to know what to look for. You know, and that's another, another big myth that is spread on a lot of different websites, blogs, and, and forums, forums, especially, um, that, you know, you could outsource anything that you don't know how to do. Well, that, that might be true. And when it comes to hiring, you should be hiring people that are good at things that you're not. Um, but when you're in this industry, specifically SEO and web design, not as much as SEO, but, um, you know, these related services, you go to different freelance sites and uh, you post up a job and you get, 20, 30, 40, 50 responses with portfolios and, you know, people talk about different things. And if you don't know what you're outsourcing or what exactly it is you're looking for them to do, you're, you're pretty much uh, buying a lottery ticket and trying to see if you're going to win. 
you know, that that's what it boils down to. It's like a lottery. Um, and that's what happens if you don't know what it is that you're offering. So, you know, if you're, if you have no education, you don't understand SEO, but you think that you could sell SEO, you think that you could run an SEO business, well, there's, there's going to be a problem. There's definitely going to be a problem because, um, I mean, even those that do SEO for a living, um, that write about it, blog about it, actually do case studies. You get a hundred experts in a room, none of them agree on different SEO techniques. I mean, you will look at the Moz uh, state of the search every year. They have uh, different local SEO experts come on and and kind of give their, I guess it's like a survey, and and they always you know say what they think is the biggest change and uh, the most important thing, the least important thing. And, uh, you know, it's all, it, it's all relative. They, they have their own opinions and it conflicts with everybody else's. So you have, you ultimately end up with a survey of these experts and what you could conclude from it is everybody has different opinions and different ideas of what's going on. So, um, think about that when it comes to outsourcers, these people that are getting paid a couple of dollars an hour, uh, for SEO. Like, do you think they all think the same strategies work? You know, what about you? What do you think? You know, and that's why it's important to know uh, enough about what you're you're selling and doing to be able to outsource successfully. Um, you can't just you, you can't just pick a random person that's offering the cheapest rate uh, and expect them to do it all. They a lot of them need direction. They need to know what you want them to do. Uh, not just you know using them to uh, do what they think they know. You got to know what you want them to do. So um, that that's pretty important. You got to know what to look for. Um, now this is a, a interesting topic, and a lot of people have different opinions on it. Outsourcing entire projects versus outsourcing tasks. Um, so. What it boils down to here is if you outsource an entire project to somebody, you're, it might be easier project management, but the problem is you're passing on the, the project management to them. So they're managing the project and the fulfillment. Um, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem, well, one of the bigger problems is lower profit margins. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I always, uh, keep in mind my profit margins. So uh, I always like the the cheaper ways. Um, you know, so I don't know. Uh, it's also you know higher risk when you outsource an entire project because if that project bombs, well, you know then you have to start from scratch with somebody else. So that's a that's another problem. Now what I like to do is outsource tasks like certain different things that uh, different people do. Um, and the reason is that it definitely allows for uh, higher profit margins, but it also gets things done uh, a lot faster. It's a lot quicker to um, fulfill a project when you're outsourcing different tasks instead of outsourcing the entire project. Um, so to give you an idea, uh, what I recommend to people, if you're doing web design, um, your first person that you should hire as an outsourcer or an employee is a graphic designer. Graphic design takes time. I don't know much about graphic design at all. Uh, so that's always been uh, something that I've outsourced regularly. <clears throat> I have, uh, I've had people in-house and I have uh, I have quite a few people that I outsource to regularly doing graphics, and pretty recently, I um, I guess it was last Sunday, I had a project come and do, and everybody was behind. I there's no way that it would be done, so I went and I had to get another outsourcer, and it was for graphics. I needed some some banners. I think it was like 13 banners and a couple logos, um, maybe a couple call to action buttons and stuff. Well, um, 
I ended up finding a couple different outsourcers and just outsource specific tasks. And, um, you know, it, it allowed me to get things done a lot faster. You know, I had literally one less than a day. I had about 12 hours to have everything done and everything was done within probably four hours. So, um, you know, that's another reason I like to outsource tests instead of an entire project. Uh, let's see here. We've got a question. John C., how much do you pay for someone on Node-Desk to do the background image? Uh, what do you mean by background image? What kind of background image? Like just a website or um, like a banner? What? And while I'm waiting for John, oh, he says, I guess it goes with the banner. So, um, you know, I, when I first started outsourcing, I ended up paying per project. So I made the mistake. It was, it was definitely a mistake. And then I went by um, paying a salary type thing per week. Uh, that was a mistake as well. Um, so what I do with my outsourcers is I pay them hourly. Um, now, John asked how much I pay for someone on Odesk to do a background image or banner. I don't pay per project. You know, I've seen people pay per project a lot when I look at their work history and I see people paying 30, 40, 50 bucks for a couple banners or uh, different things, but you get them to do it hourly and it's done I don't know, a couple hours. So you're paying $5 an hour and your banners are done in two hours. That's just 10 bucks instead of 40 or 50 bucks. So, uh, you know, I, I always pay hourly. Um, and Odesk, Odesk used to be my, my favorite uh, to find people, but we'll get into that later. I'll, I'll tell you guys my favorite now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I hope that answered your question, John. Um, it's not so much like the project task, it's just hourly. So you just find somebody hourly and, uh, you know, if they don't, if they don't, uh, get it finished fast enough, then get rid of them and find somebody else. That's, I mean, that's kind of what you have to do. You'll have, you'll always have some people that will milk the clock. Um, you know, it happens all the time. So if you have somebody that milks, the, milks the clock, then, uh, you got to get rid of them find somebody that could knock out graphics or knock out uh, CSS changes or whatever you're outsourcing, get somebody that could get it done fast. Um, and right, you want to, you want, you want them to get it done right too. So <laughs> otherwise uh, fast doesn't matter. Uh, John had another question too. Uh, how many hours would you expect a graphic designer to work on an HVAC site? Uh, to complete the icons, banner, background, whatever else you use. Um, on average, maybe two, three hours. I, I have people that are very good, very quick. Um, but let's assume that you find somebody that's average. You hire somebody that's average at graphic design. Maybe, maybe it'll take five or six hours. Uh, it definitely shouldn't take very long at all. Um, but Five or six hours, that's reasonable for somebody that's average, maybe even below average. Um, so, you know, that's that's really not, not too bad. But uh, let's go ahead and, and get to the next slide here. So where, where to go for finding outsourcers? So there's three big sites, the big sites, um, that everyone goes to. Uh, I guess there's technically four. There's Odesk, Elance, Freelancer, and Guru. Guru, Guru is usually um, usually pretty high price, so uh, a lot of people avoid going there. And you know what I should have mentioned on here is Fiverr, um, but there's a reason I don't like Fiverr for this type of stuff, and that's because 
they just uh, it's not worth it. Like for one banner, like if let's say I have a slideshow for um, what an HVAC company, I have a slideshow that I need need complete. It's for air conditioning, heating company, whatever. And there's five images in the slideshow. So if I pay five dollars per banner, um, then you know that's twenty five bucks. But if I have a graphic designer do it, they the the hard work is in the first banner, probably I think at least. Um, <laughs> so you know I could get uh, somebody at four or five dollars an hour to knock that out in one hour. So you know five bucks for five instead of you know twenty five bucks for the same amount. So uh, I, I don't really like Fiverr for this type of stuff. Um, you're, it's small amounts. So you might think, well, it's okay. I still have good profit margins. Yeah, well, I, I look at everything, all the tiny stuff, even if it's a difference of $5, I look at it. Like that's, that's just what I do. That's how I am. Um, so the big three, Odesk, Elance, Freelancer, Odesk used to be my favorite. Um, they're still pretty good. I've noticed a, a pretty big increase in price. Um, a lot of hourly wages have gone up. I, mean, I I used to find good quality people at literally two dollars an hour. Um, my one of my graphic designers uh, is from Jamaica, and he started at two dollars an hour. Um, I've had other people doing various tasks for SEO at, you know, two to three dollars an hour. So, <laughs> you know, it, it used to be really good. Now, um, for the same quality it used to be is maybe, I don't know, what I used to pay two dollars for is now like five, six, seven dollars an hour. So, uh, call it inflation, I, I have no idea, but, you know, Odesk has kind of changed a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's still good. A lot of people use it. I still use it every now and then and, and try to, uh, you know, find some good people, but it's a lot more difficult now. Uh, freelancer, uh, freelancer who just bought, uh, the warrior form last year. Um, you know, it's a pretty big freelancing website, but I have never, never really liked using them. Um, they, I believe they also bought Script Lance, um, maybe in 2011, 2012. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I used to use Script Lance and, or maybe it's Script Lance or I, I have no idea, but um, I used to use that and found some pretty decent people. Um, but Freelancer itself, it seems like it's more of a, uh, I, you, you find freelancers in Australia, New Zealand, the U.S., and you, of course, have some of the cheaper places, the Philippines, India, uh, things like that. But, um, you know, overall, it seems like the prices are a lot higher. So um, I kind of stay clear from freelancer. Um, let's see, Elance. Elance is now my number one. It's now my favorite. And my stance would have been, you know, Odesk is still the best, but it was because last Sunday I needed to find somebody for graphics and, you know, I went to all of these. I went to Odesk, Elance, and Freelancer, and Elance provided the best selection of people, um, without a doubt, best selection of people. Um, and... You know, you get you get a wide variety. I've had people from the Philippines, Indonesia, um, Australia, even you know some really cheap people in the United States. Somebody from the U.S. Uh, bid for, man, I think it was three dollars. I'd have to check, but it was it was like three dollars an hour. I I didn't really trust it because, you know, if an American's working for three dollars an hour, there's there's something wrong with that. So uh, immediately crossed them off the list. Um, I ended up, John said, Costa Rica guy, right? And, and yes, yes, I found a guy from Costa Rica. Um, it's a kid, he's going to college, and $4 an hour. 
the guy pumped out graphics like crazy. Um, it, I mean, the quality was there. He definitely has room for improvement, but that's he is the perfect example of what I look for um, when finding a freelancer or outsourcer, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I like to find people that are, are proficient, um, that are fast, and have a high growth ceiling. Um, so if they're just average, like, you know, that that's okay. Um, like, I, I like my team to be definitely above average, uh, actually spectacular. I want them to be the best. But I believe that, you know, I could find people for cheap, two, three, four dollars an hour, and get them producing work uh, that is valued at like $50 an hour, $100 an hour. Um, and of course, I give them little raises uh, throughout their time with me. Like uh, my Jamaican graphic artist, he's he's probably my favorite. Uh, he's been with me for years. Um, started off at $2 an hour, gave him a raise to three, four, five. Uh, then he was at seven. Now I have him at, at ten dollars an hour, and he's easily worth one hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Um, he he's without a doubt um, one of the best I've come across. Um, so I I keep him filled up with with a ton of work. Um, he's always working on client sites, so uh, he's definitely good. Definitely good. I really really like him a lot. Uh, and I found him on Odesk. This was years ago, so. Um, but Elance, Elance has a wide variety of people. Yeah, um, I had a lot of people from Romania, Ukraine, uh, Russia, um, South Africa, um, Costa Rica, of course. I also had a couple of people from Jamaica, uh, Dominican Republic, Belize, places all over the world. Um, whereas Odesk, it seems like the people that are applying for the job I'm putting up is you know, it consists of people from India or Bangladesh or Pakistan or Nigeria or Ethiopia or something like that. And, uh, you know, there there's some good workers. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton of good workers in those countries, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really like going to that. Um, now I've had quite a few successful people from India. I still use some, but uh, you know, there's there's a lot of problems along the way. So, <laughs> and and communication is only one of those problems. Now, uh, here's some quick tips. Now, you, you got to fire them fast. Um, you you get somebody as an outsourcer. If they're not performing, don't wait until the job is finished because the job may not ever be finished. You got to fire them fast. Um, I mean, even within a day, as soon as you know it's not going to work and you don't have a good relationship with them, get rid of them. Uh, it's not worth it. And this is this is the same for employees, too. Um, there's no sense in keeping somebody if they're not going to work out. Just get rid of them. Fire them. Um, it's better for you. It's better for them. So um, another thing, have a group chat for your, your team. And this is what I do with a lot of outsourcers. I... I have a, a chat. Now, some of you are part of the Income Bully Skype chat, um, and that's really cool. So think about that concept, uh, but just with outsourcers. So I have people communicating with each other about different projects. I could message them real time, uh, and it's all there so I could see it. So uh, it, it's really, really effective and efficient and helps um, the whole team aspect. Um, next thing is uh, give up control. Um, now, when I say give up control, I mean, um, okay, when I first started outsourcing and I had, um, you know, I had a lot of graphics to be done for different websites. I was doing a lot of different websites and I, I definitely wasn't big yet. I was, I was just you know, one man show, just me, um, and a few outsourcers here and there. And, uh, you know, for graphics, I always outsource. So, um, when I say give up control, I mean, 
I I like control. I like to feel in control. I'm a control freak, kind of. Um, but when I say give up control, I mean um, to to let it benefit your business. Um, let's give you an example with graphics. I uh, whenever an outsourcer ended up finishing some website banners or some logos, they would email it to me. They would email it to me. I would save it. Then I would have to go into the FTP, um, ha rename the the graphics, add it to the website. I was doing all that myself. So I was basically outsourcing the, you know, just the design of the graphics. Um, and then when I finally gave up some control, just a little bit of control, and started giving my graphic designers FTP access um, so they could upload the the banners, the logos, the different call to action buttons. Um, they were the ones that did it. So that really cleared up a lot of time. Um, and it really helped my business along the way because uh, I would end up losing some graphics, couldn't find them. Uh, projects would suffer from it. Clients would be unhappy because I'd have to push back the due date, things like that. So, um, you know, when I gave up a little bit of control, it really helped my business. And, that, and that's what I mean by give up control. Uh, sometimes it's necessary. you got to give up control in order to, you know, move up to another level. Um, that's, that's really what it's, what it's all about. Uh, another tip is avoid Pakistan and Bangladesh. This is kind of funny, especially with, uh, you know, website design, uh, even SEO. You know, these two countries, they give me the biggest, the, the most problems out of anyone else, Bangladesh and Pakistan. And uh, you have them in a group chat. You have India, Pakistan, Bangladesh people. Though they start, they start hating each other. They all hate each other. People in Pakistan say that the people in Bangladesh are going to scam you out of your money. The people in Bangladesh are talking shit on the Pakistani people. And then the people in India are talking shit about both of them, saying, uh, you know, all kinds of different things. So, you know, really, it, it's not just for the benefit of your team. It's the benefit of you because they, they all really suck. Um, yeah, uh, John, was it John that said that uh, they're so cheap? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are cheap. Um, definitely very, very cheap. I've had people for a dollar an hour doing like grunt SEO work, um, like filling in uh, or signing up for citation sites, you know, different things like that, um, and and some backlinking. But uh, overall, it, it's just a nightmare to deal with. And then um, they'll harass you nonstop for work too if they feel like like they're not getting uh, a proper workload, you'll be hearing your Skype sound, like the, the whole, whatever the uh, message alert is, you'll be hearing your Skype nonstop with, sir, 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 uh, do you have any work for me, sir? Can you give me some more work, sir? And it's hourly. It doesn't matter if you say, no, I'll, I'll give you some more tasks next week. It, it's going to keep going on and on and on. So just just avoid them. I know they're cheap. I know it's hard to avoid, but um, you know you just got to. Just don't don't bother with them. There's a lot of people in other countries um, where the communication will be a lot better, and uh, usually the work will be a lot better as well. Um, so I think I could move on here. I think I, I think I saw Andrea um, have a question. Uh, Andrea said two questions. What do you mean with give up control? Okay, I answered that. And your U.S. employees are all salesmen then? Question mark. No, uh, not all of them are, are salesmen, but most of them are. Um, yeah, for the most part. But uh, yeah, it, and that's something important to address. Um, something I see that happens a lot on Warrior Forum is People think, okay, people are sold on cold calling. They think cold calling is awesome, which it is very effective. But they think that they could outsource telemarketing. 
you can't you can't truly outsource telemarketing you can't go to the Philippines or India and have them calling it's not going to work uh, especially if you're dealing with small businesses if you're dealing with small businesses you know these are people that worked in and started this stuff from nothing they're um, part of the American way it's the American dream you know be able to make something out of nothing and I know some of you are, are from other countries and I'm sure it's the same there too you know business owners small business owners um, have a great pride in their country and their local economy and they want to help it so um, you know when when they get called by somebody offering web designer or somebody offering to help expand their business, but they hear um, an extreme foreign accent, it probably isn't going to go well. Um, I mean, telemarketing is hard enough as it is. Uh, it, it is. It, it just is. It, it's a numbers game, and um, maybe you could get a good lead out of every hundred calls, but if you add an accent in there, maybe it's a good lead every 300 calls. So um, it's definitely not as uh, beneficial as if you were telemarketing, you know, with a with a U.S. team. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So ensuring project success before it starts. Uh, this is this is really key here. This is one of the most important things in this webinar, and it's setting proper expectations. Uh, you got to set proper expectations. Uh, it's extremely important, um, and I've learned this the hard way for sure. Um, so if you set proper expectations, you have a lot more freedom to get work done. Um, you have less communication, it, not that communication with the customer is bad, but you have less um, back and forth, uh, what I call the discovery phase when it comes to web design. So you have less discovery phase where they're trying to figure out what they want. So setting proper expectations, you avoid that. Um, you also position yourself as the expert, not the slave. Um, and... Uh, I think this is where a lot of people struggle with because um, they're doing what they can to make the sale, right? So I think a lot of people end up losing, they end up losing their positioning um, in order to close a sale. And, uh, you know, when you're starting off, I could see why it happens, but you got to try and correct yourself. Now, um, when I say not the slave, I mean more of like the employee. You are hired not as an employee, but as an expert. Um, you know, that, that's why you're doing this. You know what you're doing. So you have to position yourself that way. And if you set proper expectations um, with the project, with your company, with you, with what you do and what this will do for them, then you'll have no problem positioning yourself as the expert instead of an employee. Um, and, and one thing a lot of people do with this, um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of you guys, a lot of subscribers to the blog, a lot of people have emailed me, um, and they talk about like their SEO strategy and um, their reporting, like what, what they use for reports and, uh, and how they set up like their sales. And, a lot of people say that they promise like certain things every month, like X amount of backlinks, X amount of reviews, X amount of citations built, videos, all this stuff. And really, this is not the way to do it. You are not positioning yourself as the expert. You essentially created a job for yourself as an employee. You're letting them check, check up on you verifying everything that you said you were going to do. You just gave your yourself a job qualification checklist. So every single month when you're supposed to be getting paid automatically, you're up for review. So that's why why this is so important. 
Now, you, uh, you position yourself differently. You're not creating a job for yourself. You're creating an opportunity for the business that is hiring you. Then, you know, it's all on you. It is you that is in control, not, not the client. And that is extremely, extremely important. Um, John says, I thought you mentioned you give updates each month, maybe a few of your clients. Yeah, I do give updates. I give updates saying, uh, you know, what I've done um, and showing them certain metrics. But there's a, there's a difference in giving them updates and giving them um, like a checklist uh, to make sure you're doing your job. You're giving them updates because you want to keep them in the loop and show them the value that you're giving. You're not giving updates in order for them to verify everything you're doing and, and micromanage you. Um, they're not your boss. You know, they're just the ones paying you every single month without, um, you know, you're given a, a huge checklist. Um, so you show them traffic, you mean? No. Well, it's kind of. I, I sometimes show traffic. But I basically do like an overview. So let's say um, Bob's Roofing is a customer of mine, and um, they're doing local SEO for $700 a month. So uh, what I might send them as a monthly report could be uh, like all the citations that were claimed. Like I, I use Bright Local. A lot of you guys know I use Bright Local. So I could show like a, a citation report. I could show um, their overall traffic or, um, you know, different things show the impressions that show up in uh, Google Webmaster Tools, um, just different things so they could see, um, so they could see value. And it doesn't matter if it's really uh, a ton of value. They just want to see something. Um, and that's, that's to extend their life as a client. Uh, it's not so much to have them verify the work you're doing. It's it's for them to feel like they're kept in the loop. Um, and I have a lot of clients that don't even require that. A lot of them, you know, I, I haven't even emailed or talked to for quite some time. So it's just automated payments. Um, but the point here is uh, you don't want to create a job for yourself where you're you're having a monthly review of whether you can or, or whether you will get paid or whether you won't get paid. Um, I mean, you could send information and, um, and all that just, you know, as a courtesy, but you don't want to create a position where you're kind of stuck, where you're, um, where you're waiting for a check to be cut by your employer. You don't want to have the employee mindset and you don't want, want the, the client to think that they are your employer. Um, it's just a, a positioning thing. So, um, you know, that, that's what it comes down to. Position yourself as the expert, not an employee. Um, so let me get through this one. And then any other questions that you have, John, anyone else, we'll get through that uh, later on here so we don't have a two or three hour long webinar. Um, so the next thing is, uh, you know, you set proper expectations, you have less complaints and more happy customers. So when you have less, comp uh, if you don't set proper expectations, you will have, you will have complaints. Um, and this could be as simple as, you know, you sell somebody on a website and you say that you have a, a 30 day turnaround time. Okay. So that's, that's fine. You have a 30-day turnaround time. That's awesome. But, um, you know, if if that's your turnaround time, then you're coming in at 45 days. You know, you're going to get some people that are unhappy. Um, you're going to have people that are going to be pretty pissed off. Like, well, you said uh, 30 days. It's 45 days right now. Um, what are we going to do about this? So, <laughs> you know, there there's things that come up. I understand that it's happened to me a lot, um, but you know when it comes to when it comes to this, you got to set proper expectations. Um, when I first started out, I I was way too confident in myself, and even uh, pretty recently, I've been way too confident in myself and my team with how much we could handle. Um, and when you're too confident and you're not 
you know, setting realistic uh, expectations, then you're going to have people that are going to be upset. That means uh, complaints on Yelp, complaints on whatever different review sites there are, um, complaints with the Better Business Bureau. Um, you'll have people that, I mean, they'll even do uh, attorney general complaints with the, the state that you live in. You know, this happens. It happens. It, it happens if you don't deliver what you promise. And I know this because it's happened to me numerous times. And if you get enough complaints with the Better Business Bureau, forget the, the grade rating, they'll end up uh, trying to do some kind of news release, a press release on you and how you're, um, you're bad with business and people should uh, stay clear of you. And that could really damage your reputation and, and hurt your um, hurt your revenue long term. I mean, it, it happens. I, I've dealt with this stuff. It, it happens. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, it could just be a couple, couple complaints and it, the damage is done. So uh, if you set proper expectations, you also give your client a job to do while you're getting the project finished. And what I mean by this is, for example, with web design, um, I, I've taken a lot of uh, the work on. It creates more work for my team. But um, you know what? All I ask for from the client is to get me some sort of an about us page. Like that's all I need. Just give me an about us page. Um, send me a list of associations, like trade associations, affiliations that you're with. Uh, if you're in the Chamber of Commerce or if you're accredited with the BBB. Send me that information, and that's all you got to do. Um, send me pictures too. So you have them doing something for the project while you're doing everything else. Um, this is important. You always, um, to really set proper expectations, um, you don't want them to say or want them to think that everything is on you. You want them to realize like they have something to do as well. So uh, this project isn't all on your shoulders. It's it's also on theirs, and that's that's really important to uh, convey. Um, you know, in the stage like right before the project even begins. And of course, uh, setting proper expectations um, will allow you to have realistic completion dates. Uh, that's important. You got to always allow room for error. Um, you might think that you could get something done in, in three weeks. Well, add another week because you never know what could happen. You could have, um, let's say you have the website almost finished. And this has happened to me countless times. I have a website that's on my development server. And, um, well, let's say like 10 websites on the development server all are, are pretty much ready to go. I just got to call the client, go through with it. Something happens. Something ends up happening and um, the server crashes or the data is lost. Um, something happens and pushes everything back. All these people, well, their completion date is not going to be met. So um, <clears throat> when you have a realistic completion date and you'll allow room for error, you're you're allowing you know these things to happen. Maybe, maybe it, it's a rare event. Maybe, um, maybe it's an employee that you could usually count on to do everything you ask, but something happens and they're in a car accident, and can't work. You know, it, it, these things happen. So, um, if you set proper expectations, you could you, you could accomplish these things. You can avoid a lot of different problems. Um, you know, that that's really one of the most important things here. Now, uh, see here in bold, it says, the biggest key to a successful project, no matter what it may be, is communication between you and the client and you and your team. Now, this is 100% true. It is 100% true. Um, and even let's say that you do have a, a completion date, a turnaround time that you promised to a client. Usually, if something goes wrong, the client will understand, but you have to communicate with them. 
uh, the second you think that you might be a little late, say, hey, okay, a uh, couple things happened here. I'm running a little behind schedule. I'm still going to try to meet the completion date, but I just wanted to let you know that um, there's a chance we might be behind by uh, a couple days to a week. You know, you want to make sure that you let them know. And you gotta you gotta make sure you communicate with uh, your team as well with everything, um, with changes that a client might want. Uh, pretty much everything you you gotta you gotta communicate. And uh, successful project management um, is so dependent on communication. Uh, that's why you see all these different tools out there to help you be more productive in projects, productive with management. Um, project management, you know, so, um, you know, it, communication, it's key. If you're not good at communicating, well, you, you better get better at it. So, <laughs> uh, communication is extremely important. Um, so let's go on to uh, the next slide here. So when you're effectively managing projects, uh, you must stay organized. This is a big one, and this is uh, something that I continue to struggle with because uh, I just have so many things going on. And if you guys saw my desk right now, uh, I have, I mean, I have tons of different papers. I have a couple different notepads. I actually have like uh, seven or eight different notepads right in front of me. I have a planner, I have, um, have a Mountain Dew water bottle, I got some air duster right here, um, all kinds of different stuff on my desk. I mean, it, it's cluttered, it's cluttered to hell. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, so maybe it's not the desk that needs to stay organized, but I mean, I'm talking about organization as a whole when it comes to projects. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys deal with clients um, by email. I mean, there's phone, of course, and, uh, you know, phone, I, phone is awful for taking notes because then I have, like, one of my eight notepads, and I have to go through, like, countless pages to find out where I put these notes and then put it in the project management platform. Uh, it's, a, it's a big pain in the ass, but... Um, staying organized with email is a lot easier. You know, if you're communicating with a client by email and you have different notes, um, different uh, design changes that they want, or they're sending you an about us page or pictures or, you know, some kind of important information, um, you need it to not just stay in your inbox. You got to have it, you know, organized. Some people use Outlook and they just create another folder. Um, I use um, a system that uses Evernote. Uh, th this is for like, you know, more of my personal projects, but I use Evernote for a lot of organization. It's definitely an awesome program. If you guys don't have it, you should check it out. Um, but I also use my project management platform and I can forward emails. Like let's say there's uh, 31 pictures uh, Bob's Roofing sent me for their website gallery. Um, so I could forward that email into my project management platform and it will automatically assign it to that client, which is extremely useful. Um, anyway, it, it, it helps me stay organized and that allows me to, you know, get things done um, and have a successful project. Um, it allows me to communicate with my entire team. So uh, it's definitely, definitely important to stay organized the best that you can. Um, there's tons of different tricks out there, tons of different tools. Uh, just try and evaluate yourself honestly and see where you're lacking. See where the holes are in your business. Um, this is something I have to do constantly because as soon as I patch one hole, there's five more somewhere else and it, it's something you have to constantly do um, so next thing here is uh, use project management software that includes a, a Gantt chart so I, I don't know if if you guys um, 
how many of you have heard about uh, a Gantt chart? Give me a three. And give me a five if you haven't. Okay, so you guys don't you guys don't know what a, a Gantt chart is. Now <laughs> it sounds stupid. Now do you guys have you guys ever used any kind of project management platform like uh Basecamp, Freedcamp, uh anything like that? Andrea says insightly. You know, I, I never really considered Insightly much for uh, project management, more of a, I don't know, it's like a maybe a cross between um, a CRM and project management platform. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so um, first thing here, is you guys got to use some sort of project management platform. Uh, that's that's definitely one of the biggest things. I use Teamwork. Um, I used to use uh, what was called Collaborative, uh, and that is something I installed on my server and created accounts for different outsourcers and allowed me to uh, manage tasks. Now, one of the, one of the biggest problems that I've had is you know a lot of different project management platforms they're supposed to make your life easier right they're supposed to let you uh, spend more time in other areas of your business instead of managing projects well it seems to me like 99 percent of these platforms out there take more time to manage a project than if you weren't using one at all and, and that's one of the big problems that i have with a lot of them out there um but uh you know it, it definitely is necessary, and we'll talk more about the one I recommend here in a minute. Um, but uh, but yeah, the the Gantt chart, and I know this is something later on in here that says utilize Gantt charts. But a Gantt chart is uh, a way for you to effectively see um, what's going on in your business, what's going on with different projects. Um, it's a visual. It's it's a way to visually see everything so you could quickly adjust um, timelines milestones um, it's just something uh, that's really effective especially if you're if you're managing a project that consists more of, of more than just you you know so if you have a team of outsourcers um, you want something that uses a Gantt chart uh, it'll it'll really help you in the long run so uh, I definitely recommend you guys uh, look into it. Uh, I think you could create some in Excel if you wanted, but um, do some research after this webinar and look into uh, some Gantt charts. Um, so uh, another way to effectively manage a project, you got to create milestones. You got to set reminders for milestones. So uh, let's say you have a 30-day turnaround time. You know that's awesome, but um, you don't just get there. You you don't just go from A to Z. You go from A to B to C to D and so on to get to the end. Um, and, and that's why milestones are important. Um, you could set a milestone for you know first ten days, having everything set up, a template installed, um, everything ready to go, and then by day twenty, you have everything added, graphics done. Um, content added, menus added, all this other stuff, and then just the final touches for the last 10 days. Um, <clears throat> you know, milestones, it, it's important. It gives you goals within projects. Um, it sets the pace. It allows you to um, see where you need to be. Um, if you're running late on a project, then you know you got to place more focus on it. Uh, and that that's, that's just something that you got to do. You got to create milestones. Uh, and that's with everything in life. It's not just uh, project management. I, I think it's more like uh, life management. You know, you have certain goals in life. You have certain things that you need to do to get there. Um, you know, if you, if you want to be making $10,000 a month, you don't just wake up and 
there you are, you're making $10,000 a month, you got to get there. So what are the milestones um, that you need to reach in order to get to $10,000 a month? You know, that's how you got to, to set up these projects um, and, you know, get these things done, effectively manage. Uh, no, next thing here is you got to address problems head on. Uh, adjust expectations. You know, one of my biggest weaknesses is, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to do that sometimes. Like, you know, when I have a client that um, there, there's been some kind of problem, I think, well, we'll, we'll fix this. It's not, it's not going to be an issue. So there's no reason to, to communicate with them about this and worry them. Well, uh, in reality, if I would have communicated with them and uh, been more, you know, head on, I probably wouldn't have ran on to, ran into problems later on, you know, when they want a refund or um, they give a less than stellar review, you know, something like that. So, um, you know, you got to adjust problems head on and adjust expectations. So, you know, if you're running late or something happens, let them know, be straight up about it. Um, and tell them, okay, well, uh, this has happened in the past before, and usually um, there's a couple of things I could do to minimize the turnaround, uh, but this is what we're looking at. You adjust the expectations. Um, and that's important to do. You guys got to gotta be able to do that. You got to be able to realize when, okay, there's a problem. Now I got to solve it. Um, and, you know, don't, don't, make the same mistake that I have and and uh, ignore it and uh, think it'll go away or magically be fixed. It doesn't get fixed. Um, and it usually adds a, a bigger problem um, with the client if you're not going to be straightforward with them. So, um, you know, that's something you got to do or else you're going to end up with complaints, bad reviews, um, BBB complaints. I've, I've had those. So, um, but you got to be, it doesn't have to be just on the complaints. It could just be somebody that, that won't refer you to somebody else. This, this causes a loss in revenue, loss in potential revenue. So uh, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely important. You got to address the problem set on. Um, now, uh, another thing to effectively manage a project, you got to utilize automate automation when you can. Um, so uh, there's this this one's a little bit difficult because if you're just using Excel or you're just using uh, like a notepad for your project management, you're not automating anything. And a lot of people think outsourcing is automation. It's not really automation um, when it comes to project management because you still got to manage those outsourcers. Um, utilizing automation uh, can be done in certain programs for project management where like let's say there are common things that are done with every single every single website that you design, right? So um, when I think of a website project, I know that okay, I got to find a template. We got to put a logo in there. We got to find uh, we got to put content in there. Got to add a, con a contact form, a free estimate form, um, add a photo gallery, banners for a slideshow. Um, you know, different tasks like CSS changes, um, whatever it is that we do normally through a project, like how can, how can we automate that? If it's SEO, okay, there's on-page optimization, there's keyword research, there's listing optimization, there's citation building, there's all these different things. Um, so how do you automate this with, when you're managing projects? Um, the, the tool I use uh, allows you to set up automated task lists, like use a template, and then you could assign those tasks. So uh, it's pretty cheap too, it's teamwork, and there's a, a free trial, um, which we'll, we'll be talking about. I think the next slide is actually uh, about teamwork, yes. So the platform I use and recommend, teamwork. Um, this is the only one I've ever used that I felt uh, saved me a lot of time and was robust enough to grow with me. Um, like I said before, I used uh, Collabtive on my own server, and it was pretty bare bones. And I liked it because it didn't take me too much time to manage a project. 
like this uh, right here is is really awesome. Um, so it allows for the templates, like I just talked about, automation, automate what you can. Um, it allows templates for task lists um, to automate the project. Um, so you're doing web design, you're doing SEO. There are certain tasks that you do that, uh, you know, are going to be the same no matter if it's, you know, a roofing client or um, a carpet cleaning client. It, it doesn't matter. The tasks are the are pretty much the same. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it does that. Um, it's really easy to stay organized. Um, and one of the things I talked about earlier is like email, um, staying organized with my email. If somebody sends me pictures or a client communicates with me about a project, I could forward that into the project management platform. Uh, same thing with salespeople. So um, if somebody sold someone a site and the person's calling, their, um, they have a couple things to add or say, okay, I forgot to mention that I really want this and this and this on the website. Please make sure that's done. Um, the salesperson could just forward an email to Teamwork um, and it gets sorted into uh, that client's project. So everything's all there, all communication is there. You don't lose track of anything. And that's something that uh, is so important to me because I get so many emails, um, just always so many things to do. And I like my desk is an absolute mess. So, um, you know, having, having, things organized where I can, um, it really helps. And being able to do this and, and forward things to teamwork and having it so everybody could see it that's on the project really helps out a lot. Um, now it also utilizes a Gantt chart. Um, that's just one of the, the features of it. Um, it's even if you don't want to use a Gantt chart, um, you know, there, there's a lot more to it. I recommend you guys check it out. As you see here, free plan up to two projects at a time. Um, you know, why not? Why not give it a try? Um, I uh, I always hear people talking about Basecamp, and I've used Basecamp before, and man, I, I think it's just a nightmare. Um, I hate dealing with Basecamp. It's just so it just seems so clunky to me and time consuming. Um, so the, and expensive, it's pretty expensive in comparison to a lot of other project management platforms. Um, there's tons of third party integrations, Dropbox, Google drive, Google apps, um, you know, all, all kinds of different things in nutshell. I use nutshell as a CRN. So, uh, you know, that that's really helpful. Um, easy to navigate, manage projects, employees, outsourcers. The thing is super easy. So uh, it's what I use. It's what I've used for a couple years now. Um, I absolutely recommend using it. I signed up today as an affiliate. I've been using it for years, and I just signed up today for as an affiliate. So um, if you guys go through my link, cool. If not, just go to teamwork.com, and you can check it out. It is uh, pretty awesome. You have a free trial. I think it's 30 days. Um, so you could actually use like uh, uh, one of the paid options or whatever um, plans that they have um, for 30 days. And if you're, you only have two active projects, it's free forever. So uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, I love it. I think most of you guys will love it too. So I, I think that kind of wraps things up here. Now we have uh, the questions and answers section. So um, what kind of what kind of questions do you guys have? John said, uh, "What do you think of Google Drive and sharing files?" Uh, Google Drive's cool. Um, it's not. It's not exactly a, um, a way to manage a project. I mean, you need more than that. But, um, you know, it's cool. I, I have Google Drive, but um, my preference has always been Dropbox. I don't know. There, there's no reason, really. Um, I just used Dropbox before 
Google Drive. So, um, you know, no, no real reason behind the preference. But um, I don't know. Maybe it's because Google's taking over the world, and I want to help somebody else instead. <laughs> what other questions do we have? Uh, earlier in the chat, Ron said a lot of time the delay is the problem uh, getting content and stuff from the client. You know, Ron, that that is true. Um, you know, what, what has really bothered me in the past is, you know, I had pretty much everything ready to go. I had um, the project perfectly planned, right? And um, hit a snag because the client wouldn't send anything. They were busy. It was their busy time. I understood. So, you know, okay, I just pushed it to the side. And then, um, you know, I guess it was maybe a month, maybe two months later when I was slammed. I was slammed with work. I couldn't keep up. Um, in that time period, I actually had uh, quite a few different complaints from, from clients because I couldn't keep up with the workload. There was nothing I could do. Um, kept hiring and hiring and hiring and uh, I had some holes in my in my fulfillment um, for the business so you know I I didn't figure it out until later but um, you know I kept hiring and and trying to deal with this increasing workload but um, and then that was when that client wanted to send me over gobs and gobs and gobs of information uh, they ended up sending me like, uh, what was it, like 500 and something pictures. Uh, they sent me like 30 something pages and they sent me a catalog um, in PDF format that I would need to convert and like all this different stuff and it just drove me crazy. Like they sent it all and bombarded me during my busiest time. <laughs> so it was it was pretty awful. Um, what I've done since then, uh, now I'll still ask them for, you know, pictures and stuff, but this takes the pressure off, um, allows me to manage projects better, and this is just something I've done in the past, I guess, year and a half, maybe, um, and that is uh, when I sell a website, I tell them, okay, all I need from you is to send me pictures like if you have a picture of your trucks with logos on it um, send me other pictures of work you've done and send me an about us page i'll take care of the rest um and i actually just had a client the other day who was wanting to know what was going on with the site and of course they never sent anything but um you know the the site was finished pretty much i was just waiting on them and i didn't really wait on them for the about us page i put what i wanted in there um we use stock photos for the photo gallery um because now i know how clients could get they could push you off for months and then once they once you waited two months they expect everything in two days uh when they're ready so uh you got to be prepared for that so now i i don't even include that in the equation um, if they want to send content over, that's fine, but I will, I will have content in there, um, whether they send it or not. So it'll be my content. They have a problem with it. They could send me exactly what they want content wise. If not, then, uh, I did my, my part. So, um, you know, that, that's just something that I do to, um, not just add value and stand out from others. Um, but it's something I, I do for project management purposes because um, there's nothing worse than, you know, a pissed off client that ends up uh, hating you and wanting revenge and wanting to see you die, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, you gotta, you just gotta do what you can to um, solve problems before it's ever a problem. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, a lot of project delay is because of the client not sending sending content and graphics and things like that then 
um, you have to eliminate that from the equation. You have to uh, you have to come up with your own solution. Maybe that's um, copying and pasting content from uh, another similar site in another part of the country. Uh, who knows? It's whatever you can do to solve that um, problem before it happens is uh, something you should do. And you know that's actually something I I probably should have talked about. Uh, for tonight is is solving those problems. Solving, um, you do enough websites, you do enough work in whatever field it is that you're in, um, you'll start noticing different things, different quirks, different things that happen on a regular basis that cause problems, right? So um, if something is causing a problem repeatedly, uh, then it's time for you to adjust. You got to fix it, fix that problem um, before it happens again. Uh, that that's something I, I hope a lot of you guys take away from this tonight, because um, it's something I didn't learn until later on and could have saved me a lot of trouble. Um, fix problems before the problems exist repeatedly. Um, anyway, uh, that that's enough for that that topic. <laughs> I, I think I answered the question there. Um, any other questions we have tonight? Seems like there's there's no other questions. So what do you guys think? Have you uh, have you learned a lot tonight? Good, good deal. Awesome. Yeah, Andrea, that's uh, that's just kind of how things go. You know, you got to learn from mistakes and you got to adjust constantly. Um, it's not just a one-time thing either. Like, you uh, you think that you could fix a couple holes here and there, but there's more holes that pop up, and it's a a constant battle, and you got to constantly adjust to to keep on. Uh, to keep on elevating to another level. So um you know be don't don't be upset about mistakes. I mean mistakes happen uh, as long as we all learn from them that's we're we're going to be a lot better off. So um any other questions tonight? All right, I think that that sums it up, guys. I um, want to thank you guys for, for coming here. Um, and uh, sorry to miss Lewis tonight. Oh, we have one more one more question. John says, graphic designers, when working with them, how specific are you with what you want done? Uh, do you allow them to use their creativity, or do you have complete control over what they design for a couple of sliders? Um, OK, John, so. When I have a, a graphic designer, they're doing work like, let's say, on a, a couple banners for a slider, like you said. Um, I don't tell them exactly what to put. Uh, now, if they're, they're somebody brand new that I'm trying out, I'll say, okay, use this image and you know this text and blah, 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 have them put it together. But um, usually what I could do is point out examples that I like um, or, you know, let them do their own thing. Um, I like to see their own creativity first uh, and see what they could come up with. But, um, you know, it, it's – I'm not the graphic design expert, so I, I don't know much about graphics. I could kind of guide them and say what I like and what I don't like, but – you know, for the most part, I think I do give them uh, pretty much complete control in a sense. Now, if it's for uh, a client, let's say um, a roofing company, you know, and I say, okay, here are the dimensions of the slider, um, put this together, just something cool, blah, blah, blah. Now, what I do want them to do is include a call to action. 
um, I don't want a slider without a call to action. There has to be some sort of call to action, whether it's, you know, call for a free estimate with the number or get your free quotes or, uh, you know, something. You, you got to have some sort of call to action, at least have a business name with a logo with trust symbols um, and a call now section of the 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 slider images you know I, I tell them like everybody that does graphics for me has already knows this um, every single slider image it will have that um, if it doesn't then there's no point of even having a slider in my opinion um, there's got to be some purpose to it not just you know showing off some pictures you could have a photo gallery page for that um, but there's got to be a purpose. So um, I give them complete control, except I tell them what they need to include in it. So um, if they're, they want a super service award with Angie's List or they're A plus rated with Better Business Bureau or um, something else, uh, maybe if, if they're roofing, then they're uh, Shingle Master, uh, Certainty. Owens courting, you know, different trust symbols um, on the website, in the slider, I'll have them add. So um, complete control, but uh, just a little bit of guidance, I guess. So I hope that that answers it for you. And if you if you need uh, more clarification, I think you're in the Skype group. So uh, just ask me after this webinar. Um, Anyway, I think that sums it up, guys. I want to thank you all for coming here. Um, we will be having another webinar again in two weeks, April 17th at 8 p.m. I don't know um, what the topic will be yet, but uh, we'll figure that out, and I'm sure you guys will receive an email from me. So um, thanks again for coming. If uh, you guys aren't ready to go to bed yet, um, head over to the Income Bully blog. Check out different posts. There's a, a new um, why it's ranking the seven pack analysis. Um, that's a, a new blog post up. So if you're interested in SEO and you want to see why things are ranking the way they are, um, I take a, a pretty in depth look at it and uh, kind of spell it all out for you guys. So definitely go there, check it out. Um, uh, thank you guys again. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Easter. And I will talk to you guys soon.